Yokoso, 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 welcome to the Stadium Monday Night Chat. Or is it? More on that later, ladies and gentlemen, more on that later. Say hi in the chat, introduce yourselves, of course. Don't be a lurker, don't be a lurker. Get in that chat, say hello. We're all friendly here. And if you are new, then please do me a massive favour. Hit the subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, so you know when I go live with content like this, and you don't miss out. And hey... Everyone hit the likes, because I like them, YouTube likes them. Anyhow, welcome to this special edition of the Stadia Monday Night Chat. Of course, I'm your host, Clive Illenden, and I'm here in spirit, if not exactly here live. And I'll certainly be in the chat live, so say hello to me in there. Now, of course, in chat, let me know what games you've been playing this week in chat. Uh, as for me, or rather, should I say, Lord Kinzel, uh, well, I mean, he, I mean, I, I mean, he, he, he has rediscovered how great Zombie Army 4 is, uh, especially in co-op mode. I've forgotten what, no, I hadn't forgotten. Lord Kenzel had forgotten what a great game it was. And talking of Lord Kenzel, uh, not me, Lord Kenzel, talking of Lord Kenzel, he asked me to read out this press release here. Uh, and uh, I'm just quoting here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm quoting from his press release. He says, can you remind everybody that the Lord Kenzel streams are probably the best Stadia streams, live game streams of Stadia content, full stop. That's according to Lord Kenzel, of course, not me, bar none. Let's see what, uh, let's, let's just hear what he has to say. And yet, where's the audience? That's what I want to know, ladies and gentlemen, where's the audience? <laughs> Yeah, you're watching some other shonky stream. Yeah, wannabe boys. Yeah, wannabe boys and girls. Yeah, but what are they like? You come here, you're never going back. Yeah, you come here, watch this stream. You ain't never going back to another stream. I'm telling you, this is the best quality stream. This is almost Dr. Disrespect level of Stadia streaming. In fact, I'd like to say I am the Dr. Disrespect of Stadia streaming, right? Full stop, bar none, that's it, yeah? If you're looking for quality streams, why are you not out here at this place here, yeah? Why am I looking at my screen and there's one viewer, yeah? That's what I want to know. This is gold, pure gold, yeah? And yet you're off watching some shonky amateur with their Stadia setup. What kind of BS is that when the real talent is sitting here, ladies and mm gentlemen? -hmm. Well, there you go. And I'm talking completely unbiased here, of course, but I have to agree. Uh, if you haven't checked out any of the Lord Kenzel streams, make sure you subscribe to the Lord Kenzel of Stadia channel right now if you haven't done already. Right now. We can wait. Anyway, special shout out, of course, special shout out to uh, poor Yoshida, who appears on the streams of Lord Kenzel and how she puts up with an ego like that. I've no idea. Anyway, the news, ladies and gentlemen, the news. You know, <coughs> excuse me. I have a cup of tea for this. Mm. You know, January is always a slow month for news across most industries. Of course, it's like that across most industries. You know, people are back from their Xmas holes. They're gearing up for the year's key events throughout, you know, the year in gaming and technology. Obviously, we've got CES and we've got GDC and then we've got E3, etc. There are some sort of key points throughout the year. And January is all about kind of laying out the plans, getting ready to roll out things and stuff and all the planning work, really. I remember last year in the world of Stadia, it was very quiet in January and the old Reddit Stadia Karens were like moaning their faces off, as usual. Where's the news? Where's the news? It's January. I need more news. Oh my God. Stadia's dead. Stadia's dead. No news. Stadia's dead already. Oh, I hate it. Stadia. Stadia's dead. Shut up, Mom. But at least this year, we have a steady flow of games coming to Stadia to sort of keep us busy. Games that were, you know, to be honest, last January decidedly absent. 
Um, and it's not surprising. Um, and anybody with a modicum of intelligence and patience, of course, would have realised that back in January and not been such an impatient Stadio Reddit Karen. Would they now? But no, the Stadia Reddit Karens, they were on there. Oh, my God. There's no news from Stadia. Oh, my God. Stadia is dead already. It's January. There's no news from Stadia. It's a brand new console, people. Chill. Anyway, cut to a year later. And because of the previous few months we've had with Stadia news and content, etc., the expectation of the level of news that we should be getting is equally high. And I have a fear that it's sending the old veins a popping in the Stadia Reddit Karens even as we speak for lack of news in January. Chill, people. Yeah, chill, people. The last few months, you know, leading up to December were the culmination of a whole year of activities. Yeah, of delivering things by the end of the year. And now it's a new year. And now we have to start to rev up the engine again, the Stadia engine of activity again. But as I said, we do have this year a constant flow of gains coming to Stadia to keep us satisfied for a few weeks. But it is tough. I'll be honest with you. I'll be, it's tough doing a weekly show, yeah, a Stadia content show. Um, and even more tough if you're someone like Sunny Cloud or Rock with his uh, awesome daily Stadia news content. It is even tougher. I mean, if you do like Stadia News, daily Stadia News in easy consumable chunks with soothing voices, then obviously you can pick the lovely Radio 4 voice of rock. Welcome to the rock. Welcome to Stadio Rocks on Radio 4. Or the deep bass tones of Sunny of Cloud Gaming. I can't even go that low. But anyway, both great content creators both delivering, I don't know how they do it, but daily Stadia news. But as I said, it is hard for Stadia content creators to find stuff to make videos about on a regular basis in January. I mean, I took a quick look at some well-known Stadia content creators this week. And man, is that cupboard bare. Are you listening? I've got nothing. Got, got anything, Lloyd? Anything? Anything? No? If you boys, Tom, Richie, nothing, nothing. Don't look at me, I've got nothing. Dan, Adam, Nintendo, Lee, Tom, Scarlet, nothing. Yes, yeah, Stadia source, Adam. It's not going to help us. It's all quiet. Ray, anything? Anything at all, Ray? Apart from your great smile, Ray? And the joy you bring to the world? Nothing. Anyway, there is some interesting news this week and uh, and some of it will have us speculating and probably getting overhyped. Have you learnt nothing, people? Hmm? Have you learnt nothing? Let's round up that news. Okay, so Monster Jam Still Titans 2. Yay! The sequel to the not long ago released Monster Jam Still Titans 1. Uh, is coming to Stadia on March the 28th. That is according to Cloudy with a Chance of Games. Check out his website, Cloudy with a Chance of Games. It has a little feature on that. This month, also on the 28th of January, ladies and gentlemen, 28th of January, not long, sees the launch of Tohu. Tohu, not Tofu, but Tohu. 
a beautifully, by all accounts, a beautifully looking and designed game, but like an illustrated children's book. Uh, with great puzzle elements, a bit like Figment, etc. You get Lost in Tohu, a brand new adventure game set amongst the world of weird and wonderful fish planets. Explore beautiful environments and solve intricate puzzles as a little girl joined by her mechanical alter ego, Cubus. Together, they will discover the truth about themselves and the mysterious sacred engine that powers their world. Tohu is brought to life through gorgeous handcrafted artwork with a musical score from Christopher Larkin, the award-winning composer of Hollow Knight. Whether you're searching for critters or learning how to operate a cannon that fires moles. That's what it, that's what it says on the... That's what it says on the prompt. Yeah, it's like a cannon that fires mole. It's not a spelling... No? Tohu is packed with all manner of crafty puzzles, eccentric characters and wacky conundrums. In slightly less exciting news, or a bit disappointing news, we're going to put this under the category of disappointing news. Ubisoft announced another delay to a much anticipated multiplayer game coming to Stadia. You're joking. Not another one? Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. Yeah, Brenda. Yeah, I know. It's a pattern with developers. Yeah, it's all too common. Yeah, not again. Yeah. Anyway, not another one. Yeah. Anyway, target dates are being missed. Given the year that we've had and we're having, I guess, in 2021, things are difficult, even if you can do all this remotely. So we'll, we'll give them a pass on this one um, anyway. But it is. In this case, what am I referring to, of course, ladies and gentlemen? I am referring, of course, to Riders Republic, ladies and gentlemen, Riders Republic. And if we just have a quick look at their press statement. Today, we want to let you know that we have made the decision to move our release to later this year. This additional time will allow our passionate team to deliver the best fun fueled experience to our players. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. Another delay. Um, anyway, never mind. You know, if it does genuinely give them a chance to get the game right and stuff like that, that's all cool with me. In more positive news emanating from Ubisoft and possibly, and that's a small to medium, small, small to medium sized caveat, I'd say, given the current relationship between Stadia and Ubisoft, which is very good, and with Ubisoft Plus coming to Stadia as well, I think this is going to be a shoe in for Stadia and very exciting for many Star Wars fans. The big news is a Star Wars game is in development with Ubisoft. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Ubisoft is currently in development of a new Star Wars video game that uses the open world concept popularized um, very much by Ubisoft. And the game is developed by Ubisoft Massive, which is responsible in part for the crew too and the division two which for me is very encouraging because i think most people agree that division two is one of the best looking games and the best ported games on stadia so that's very very promising as i said this is not only really highly likely that it'd be coming to stadia but uh equally more than likely day and date do i even have to say that in 2021 do I have to say that in 2021? Of course it's coming day and day. Anyway, let me know if you're excited about this and whether you're confident that the whole sort of Star Wars Ubisoft mashup is a good mix or not. Of course, this week, closer to home this week, Hitman 3 launches, ladies and gentlemen. Hitman 3 launches this week on Stadia on Wednesday. And of course, don't forget, uh, with Hitman 3, which is gearing up to be a cracking looking game, given the interviews I've seen about it. The exclusive element of Stadia is, of course, State Share. We're going to be saying, seeing the proper edition of State Share. There was a sort of beta version of it in Creator, but this is the proper implementation of State Share in a game as we would sort of understand it. And the ability to share a state of the game you're in with other players to play, it's going to be interesting to hit see 
how this is implemented. But if you look on the Stadia community blog, you'll see that it looks quite easy. Um, in the way that they've implemented it, it's almost as easy. In fact, it's the same, I think, uh, as sharing a clip. You press the, you know, the clip button there. And then I think the option, if you look at the, look on the Stadia community blog, you'll see the option there is to sort of share the state of the game, where it, is, where it has been implemented in the game. And, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be available on Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 as they see this as a trilogy of games. So that would suggest that state share can be implemented to existing games as well, which is quite encouraging. As I say, the Stadia community blog has a few screenshots of what that implementation actually looks like. Let me know if you're excited about this and the fact that we have to use state share to save a game state with any campaign or custom mission and during the missions themselves or at the mission complete screen. Um, IO Interactive sort of designed its use of the state share to allow all saved game states to include the following gameplay elements. So mission starting location with the beginning of the level mission objectives, player loadout, including weapon, gear and clothing, mission difficulty. And the incredible part of playing Hitman 3 on Stadia is that with state share, you'll be able to play with the weapons and items that you haven't even unlocked yet. So if somebody has unlocked them and then has shared that state play, that's pretty cool. So you'll be able to experience state share as well, as you've seen from that community blog, with the click of just the link, without affecting your own progress in the game. Anyway, it's coming this weekend, so very, very, sorry, coming this Wednesday, so very, very exciting to see that. What I was trying to say is coming this weekend sees the first of what we hope to be many, or in fact, not hope, we know are going to be for, uh, one of many free play weekends on Stadia. Uh, and this is specifically for Stadia Pro members, and it is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which is available to all Pro members uh, for free this weekend to play that is to you know own it just to play it for free for this over the weekend so this is a uh, this is actually something that's being implemented across all the platforms so it's available on stadia xbox playstation pc and even amazon luna so the january ghost con recon breakpoint free weekend starts from the 21st to the 25th of january and as i say it is for pro members only uh, but anyway, I've already got the game, but it's a great chance for you to pack your bags for Aurora and check out Ghost Recon. So that's January 21st to 25th. So very, very exciting. Now to speculation time. So in the regular Stadia API unpacking that various people undertake like 9to5Google and our lovely Gem, they have discovered reference to a text string called something about Project Hailstorm. So if you check out the 9to5 uh, google.com site, they've got it there. And uh, wait, wait, is, is, that the, is that the hype train I, I hear starting up? But, 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 they, but they, said, they said they weren't going to make any announcements, right? And then they said they weren't going to make any announcements about stuff. And now they're making announcements. They made an announcement and they said they weren't going to make an announcement. Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. Shut up. They haven't announced it. Just nerdy Gem and his pals came across it in the unpacking. That hardly constitutes a press release. So chill down there, Stadia Karen, yeah? Chill down. Yeah, relax. Please? Anyway, we do know the Stadia community does like to speculate. Ooh. So what can it be? What can it be? Is it next gen? Is it gen 2? Yeah, yeah. Is it gen 2? Yeah. Is it, is it gen, generation two? Generation 2.0? Yeah, yeah. Because I saw a man. Yeah, yeah. Is it gen, gen two? It's gen two. I bet it's gen two. Is it gen two? It's gen two coming. I think gen two's coming. I bet this is gen two. This is gen two. It's gen two coming. Shh. 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 Quiet there. You just learned that phrase, didn't you, gen two? Yeah. Yeah, you heard somebody mention it in a podcast, maybe. Yeah. One of our podcasts. Yeah, you heard that phrase, Gen 2, yeah? You heard it, yeah? Went in your head, didn't it? Yeah, that word, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, but I, I saw a man. He said, he said, on the, I saw it on the podcast. He said Gen 2. He said, I saw it. I saw the man at Gen 2. Shh, 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 shh. 
two, and and Gen two's coming soon. You don't, you don't really know what you're talking about, do you? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, but the man. Do me a favor. Don't talk about Gen 2 as a thing, yeah? Or a moment in time, yeah? In fact, shut the fudge up about Gen 2. There is no Gen 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said it. No Gen 2. Yeah, no Gen 2. Okay? Anyone mentions Gen 2, get out. Get out. Okay? Now, let me explain. Yeah, let me explain. Stadia 2 is the forever console, yeah? The forever platform. Stadia 2 is the forever platform, right? It is constantly evolving. This is people on Reddit They're always having a go at me already in the text and Twitter. Anyway, Stadia is the forever platform, right? The ever forever console. It's constantly evolving and improving from both a software app and a hardware point of view. Stadia will change bits out of the blades. They will replace different bits of it, upgrade parts on an ongoing basis. As they have said, that's what they're going to do. There's no Gen 2 moment. There's no big pull of the switch. Yeah. They take all the blades out and put brand new blades in and that's it. Yeah. And then press a button. Yeah. That's not how it's going to evolve. It's about the software. It's about the app. It's about upgrading parts of the blade. Yeah, it's about constant, a constant evolving generation with occasional, albeit occasional, bigger leaps ahead. Yeah, which will maybe feel like a sort of generation movement, you know, but you have to see things differently. That's my point, really. You have to view things differently. Yeah, not the old school way of thinking that, you know, Gen 2 is like some kind of new console release. Yeah, please, please. We're in the future now. Yeah, we're not talking about old school consoles. So stop it. No more mentions of Gen 2, okay? Just a constant rolling and evolving upgrade, yeah? A constant evolution of generation and generation, yeah? Not a... Clean, big step change. Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4. It's much more nuanced than that, ladies and gentlemen. That's all I'm trying to express. So don't bandy about the Gen 2 phrase like you know what it's talking about. Oh, I can't wait for Gen 2 to come. Like, because it, it's naive. Yeah, I'm calling you out. It's naive. Yeah, it'll be an evolution. Anyway, sorry. <coughs> Good. Now, can I continue? Thank you. So, Project Hailstorm, what could it be? Now, there is some speculation, and personally, um, I'm sort of erring towards some of that speculation um, that specifically relates to it being something about making Stadia available on as many devices, specifically TVs. Now, we know that Stadia is going to be built into the new range of LG televisions using their web OS kind of application uh, coming later this year. But they've also said, or at least implied, that it also it will be available for other LG televisions, probably from the 2020 range, because the WebOS app will be in the LG app store. And no doubt that's a similar kind of app that will be available for Google TV generally. Um, if you look at the LG newsroom press release, you'll see what I'm talking about. The key here is the line that states Stadia will be available on LG Smart TVs as a downloadable app from the LG Content Store in countries where Stadia is available, which sounds like it could potentially be compatible on more than just the next generation of LG TVs coming later this year. This is something that uh, Chrome and Box has picked up on, and they talk about this as possibly being, you know, a hailstorm uh, of, of sort of stadia coming to lots of devices as they say here so could this be the hailstorm just bringing down stadia onto as many devices as possible question mark hmm. duncan from cloudy with a chance of games has a slightly different view 
And he came across an article referring to Project Hailstorm in Netflix, which in basic terms, as far as I can understand it, is, and I remember going to a seminar at work about Netflix, and they talked specifically about this. And I've mentioned it before on podcasts. And in very, very sort of simple terms, now this is simple terms, <laughs> what effectively they did is Netflix sort of condensed all their content into kind of a hard drive. And then they go to the ISP owners and suppliers and they say, here, stick this hard drive in with your sort of ISP servers there so that customers can source their content from Netflix direct from you, from you, the ISP at the same rate, therefore reducing the loading times and giving the consumer a better experience rather than, you know, us having to go into the cloud all the way to California, suck it up from the service from California, come back all over here to, you know, London, back down here kind of thing. They sort of thought it would be better to put the content closer to the user. So could this be something that Google are looking to do? Again, it's an interesting take because um, that's Netflix referred to it as Hailstorm. So it's interesting. It could be a coincidence. I don't know. The more I think about it personally, because it is specifically a string text, it is actual text, you know, introducing Hailstorm, Project Hailstorm is coming. It suggests that it is something consumer facing, something that the con will pop up or give you an option to do. So something about whether heighten uh, the way to play stadium in a different way to give you that option. I don't know, it could be when you're playing on TV, it recognizes you don't have a controller, but something that gives you an option while you're playing, you know, um, added HDR or turn on ray tracing or, you know, something that you have to interact with, hence the text stream, um, or at least an announcement of something coming. Anyway, so something will pop up and say coming soon and they'll re replace the string text. And they didn't want to give away what the thing is that's coming. And so they've used a code name for now. Interesting. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I'd be interesting to see what people think in the chat, what their view on that is and things like that. But anyway, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. That was the Stadia Monday night chat. I hope you enjoyed it. A little bit different this week. And I'm looking to kind of evolve the show and make it more of a show with more little kind of set pieces and cut pieces in there. Let me know what you think about that. So it'll be less live. Occasionally I'll do live shows and sort of live specials. But I, what I want to do is sort of create a sort of a TV program, a proper show with a few sketches and stuff like that and deliver all the sort of, you know, the normal stuff I deliver, as I say, to inform educate and entertain and I hope I have informed educated and entertained you on all things Stadia anyway once again thank you for being here I really really appreciate consider joining the channel members uh, they have a lot of fun apparently um, I like to think so um, but anyway make sure you hit the likes and all of that and as I say if you are new here then make sure you've subscribed toggle that notification bell so you know when I go live with content like this anyway have a wonderful afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And I will see you here, right here, right now. Same place, same time next week. Thank you. Pray, don't let me go and pray.